technical aspects of doing so we can make sure we have a better future. Okay, that's end my talking. Thank you all for your listening. Let me, let me start and then when it gets difficult, I pass it to Roger. <laughs> It's yes and no. Of course, uh, what is the organization that you want to give guidelines to? What are those organizations? There are many, many ty different types of organizations. There are many different types of uh, uh, organizations and entities involved in using, developing, deploying, whatever AI. So it's very difficult. Okay, yeah, yeah, but uh, users and uh, policymakers are also organizations, which uh, in a sense also could and should be regulated. So yes, I think that we should have some uh, principles and uh, guidelines for how to develop and how to uh, deploy um, and design AI systems. Uh, I think the, the, the point is not so much about uh, having those guidelines, but the point is about uh, ensuring that those guidelines are followed, so the, the compliance. And uh, also, uh, if you want to go further, is also about uh, what do we need to have in place to have the... How do I know that you are following the guidelines? So even if you... You as an organization, even if you adhere to the uh, guide, to whatever guidelines, and you have some uh, compliance uh, uh, mechanisms put in place, me uh, as a user or as society in general, how do we know that you do it? How can we uh, ensure that you do follow them? What kind of uh, mechanisms do we have for, for regulation, but also for incentives and for sanctioning? That I think it's also it's much more than uh, just putting the guidelines in place, and in a sense, in a sense, it's much more. But in other sense, it's maybe something which we already do have the legal capabilities to deal with the consequence of what organisations do, and we can start by looking at those legal uh, contracting and other types of. Uh, um, mechanisms so, and see if we can use those mechanisms to ensure also the, the AI guidelines. It, it, if I may kind of um, uh, t take a step back here. So like l let's say that we have, um, so, so, so we already have many different sets of ethical guidelines and, and safety and, and you know responsible AI guidelines from lots of different sources. Um, currently what are the actual incentives and this is a question for, for all three um, speakers. What are the actual incentives for, let's say, an enterprise to actually choose to try to make their AI more ethical or to follow some of these guidelines? The example I gave in my presentation, the incentive is differentiation, is positive differentiation, is, uh, like I put it bluntly, being the free-range egg developer in AI. By being the, taking, um, uh, the following the guidelines or being uh, ethical, uh, following ethics or uh, other, type, other uh, ethical principles, use that as a differentiation, a business differentiation. So you can offer the ethical uh, application on AI and use that as a business differentiation, as we do with the free range X, but also as we do with many other types of uh, differentiation in uh, companies which take the, a, a specific principle and use that as the business case. Yes. Um, actually, I think the main incentive for companies is Customer trust. Uh, this is why we speak also about trustworthy AI systems, etc. If I trust this device, it means I trust that it will uh, deliver me a service that I expect and it will not do something I don't expect it to do, uh, then I will buy it. If I don't trust it, I will not buy it. So those who will follow the ethical guidelines will produce trustworthy devices and those who will not follow the ethical guidelines uh, will lose the market, basically. But I think this is not enough. 
this is not enough because, of course, there are also issues about uh, accessibility, about, for example, the price of this device, which is trustworthy, which might be uh, higher than the device which is not trustworthy. This is where uh, we need a regulatory framework, I believe, uh, so that, uh, uh, and this regulatory framework doesn't have to be uh, actually dictated by some authority. It could be negotiated it would be a middle out approach where stakeholders uh, and, and, and regulatory uh, agencies uh, decide together on an approach so that for the benefit of everyone, uh, we have more trustworthy devices, most trustworthy products. Uh, and a facilitator for this trustworthiness are standardization and certification processes. So we have a global framework. Jeff, would you like to add? Uh, yeah, so I agree with Professor Roger. And I think that uh, so the incentive for the companies to talk about ethic principles is to earn trust from the, from the government and from the public. So because we in the industry, in the industry we, do, we do not like regulations, because the regulations will definitely in, uh, will hinder the innovation process of the technology. So I think uh, uh, in the, so for the f uh, first uh, question that uh, so in the medical industry they have a tradition of ethical mechanisms to ensure their products will be ethical and safe. But in the internet industry, because the internet industry is, uh, is, a, is a new industry, we only have, in China we only have 20 years of history for the internet to develop. So we do not have uh, this kind of mature ethical principles or mechanisms for the company, but I think in the future we will need such kind of mechanisms to make sure that the user will trust us and the government will trust us. And uh, so, uh, for example, in the, today we have the environmental awareness. The, the, if a company uh, take care about environmental awareness, their products will be have a competitive ad advantage in the market and I think in the future the ethics of AI will, will bring the same thing for the company, internet company. Just to comment on what uh, Jeff says, I don't believe at all that regulation is against innovation, that we have, can only have either regulation or innovation and that companies don't want regulation because they want to be free to develop whatever they want. It's not the experience I have talking with companies all over the world. Actually companies at this moment are asking or begging for regulation. Once they have regulation they know where they are, they know what they can do, they know what they cannot do, they could put the, can put the blame somewhere else. So it's very easy for companies to have regulation in one end but in other end, regulation is and can be, should be seen as a stepping stone for innovation. Uh, 25 years ago, I was working in the automobile industry, uh, uh, car uh, manufacturing, and at that time, they were introduced in Europe the regulations about catalysts for cars. The catalyst is a filter on the, 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 exhaust, uh, the exhaust of the car. It therefore was seen as a way or as something which would be uh, uh, diminishing the, the performance of the car because the car could not uh, produce as much uh, stuff and it would be, uh, be worse in terms of the technical. And, and it was, uh, I, would, I saw at that time exactly the same kind of discussions that we have now about regulation of AI. It was the worst thing which would happen to us and everybody would be developing much better cars and much more quicker and, and, and uh, much more speed in the cars and every kind of things. And we, the Europeans, again, we would come with this regulation and we would be behind and whatever, all this kind of uh, discussion. And nothing was less true. All cars at this moment are better and more efficient and have much better engines than what they had at the time, exactly because we as developers of car engines had to go around these uh, catalysts to become better, to develop better engines. If we see AI regulations as a way to get us to better AI, 
and machine learning and deep learning is not the best AI that we can make. There are better mechanisms, there are better techniques which we really have to invest on. I think that we can see regulation as also for all of us here at the conference as a way to go back to our thinking uh, tables and come with better <coughs> mechanisms and better uh, techniques to, for AI. Other questions from the audience? <laughs> yes. Uh, so there were some very interesting points that were raised in each one of the presentations. Something that, uh, that would have been interesting for me to hear about is the connection between uh, the amount of trust of the regulation or uh, what you require from an ethics point of view and the specific, uh, the, the specific implementation of the algorithm or what the algorithm does. I think there may be a difference in how I would treat bias, let's say in ads that I would get during a video game or if it's uh, recommending to me how much I have to pay for a payroll in the court system. Uh, and I'd like to hear both your thoughts about it in general, how you should treat this and, 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 then, and then how you should treat it while you're developing. And then the next question is uh, how should regulation or uh, someone who's doing an audit treat this uh, and, maybe tr and maybe connect between uh, uh, the social impact of a certain, uh, of, of a certain phenomenon and, uh, and how rigorous you have to do during uh, testing or checking. For uh, yes, indeed, we don't have to have regulation at, at the level of the code. We have to have regulation and uh, always uh, law is at a more abstract level than the reality that it is being uh, regulating. We cannot go regulate at the, the commas and the dots and the, the the lowest level we have to regulate about the principles. And indeed, the principles uh, are different when we talk about whether Netflix is uh, advising us a, a good film or a bad film for today, for tonight, or when uh, a system is advising us on uh, some uh, medical treatment. So those different uh, the due diligence and also the impact of the system should be regulated differently. Uh, and we shouldn't be regulating at the level of the code. We should be regulating at a more abstract level in terms of the impact and the, the results of the systems that we are developing or the inputs of those systems, but not at the level of the code. Uh, even uh, going back to the, the small comment of uh, uh, Toby just now, of course, errors will be made, think mistakes will be made, and people or organizations will try to play the systems. None, none of us is infallible, none of us is uh, um, completely ethical at all times and at all, uh, in all situations, so we cannot really look at, uh, of course we can look and uh, deal with mistakes and errors and especially when those mistakes and errors are done purpose, purposefully, we have to deal with those. But it's not the fact that things will go wrong, which have to be a message to say that we cannot really regulate or we cannot really take the ethical principles. Things go wrong, we learn from those and hopefully it will do better or someone else uh, after us will do better than we do. And uh, it's, I don't know. Uh, I'd like to, uh, with, with respect to specific um, application areas, one would think that there are a, a wide variety of different types of um, standards, um, including such as you know the, the IEEE standards, or, but other ones that um, some of those may be applicable to some types of use cases, and some would be applicable to, to other sets. And uh, it, it would be <clears throat> it would become sort of a industry standard for a given type of application area um, to need to address certain types of concerns, which can be mapped to standards like that. Um, and one could also imagine that regulation might also require additional types of uh, requirements um, within that same sort of uh, universe of sort of blocks of, of essentially standards or levels of compliance with a given type of standard. Uh, and for that matter also with, with a principle. But really these principles are the, uh, uh, the motivating sort of philosophy behind something that's more uh, tangible that can actually be certified. So, yeah. Jeff or anybody? 
so I think the ethical principle is only the starting point. It cannot be to made too enforceable. The, like we have an ethical certification program, the IEEE proposed, I think this will not be reasonable for the industry. Maybe if you need such kind of program, that that is uh, the rule of regulations and the laws, not the ethical. Ethical is to be self-disciplined by the industry or by the practitioners. So for, how about the regulations? Maybe we we should not. We are not talking about the regulation of the under, underlying source code, uh, underlying code. We talk about the industry specific, specific or sector specific regulations. For example, in the medicine industry, the, if you use AI in the medicine industry, you, your program or system must get the approval from the FDA or from the China's FDA uh, and so on. So I think the regulation must, must be enforceable, must to adapt with the progress of the technology, with the, with the technology development. Okay, thank you. I just, as an as individual, uh, talking about this one, I just was wondering, uh, just take one very specific case. Nowadays, the machine learning learns user behavior, everything. For example, on the Friday, I have to fly back to my home. So the airline, by using all this data, they can take advantage because I have to buy home. Then they can offer you extremely high tickets. But if I, if I don't have to fly back to China on Friday, I'm flexible, they can lower the price ticket. For this kind of scenario, I think it's, it's ethical issues or is that because the company has big advantage compared with consumers. So when they utilize these things to benefit their maximum their their economic benefits through the AI algorithm, do you think that needs to be regulated or is that to, for me is to evil or whatever these things? Is that what you 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 think? Is actually they can take a lot of advantage from this yeah. machine learning by all means. It's it's a very wide question. It doesn't pertain to AI. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's a very wide question. It doesn't only pertain to AI systems, but actually many regulations historically came to uh, make uh, the balance between the, uh, say, industry, it wasn't necessarily industry, and the customer more balanced. I mean, uh, there is an imbalance because uh, you don't have as an individual the same power as the uh, uh, air, uh, airline uh, industry and regulation come in to protect you as an individual uh, this is often the case I mean, why do we have regulations actually it's it's to protect people so if it's necessary to protect people because there is uh, an extreme behavior uh, uh, because there are monopolies etc then regulation becomes uh, necessary. And this is why actually people are speaking about uh, monopolies in AI companies and maybe ways to reduce these monopolies. Uh, but regulation by itself is not here to impose uh, problems. It's here to reduce the imbalance between individuals and organizations. explicitly reason about risks, they can explicitly reason about ethical values, they can explicitly reason about all these kind of things, they can explicitly reason about what goals actually in terms of utility functions to optimize on. Um, so actually from my perspective it's a little bit, some, in, in, in the past, the system engineering actually was more about okay, what kind of rules and what kind of performance measures to use to actually design those systems. 
And actually also from that perspective, I think a lot of people are still thinking about, okay, how to design or best design or design ethics into the systems. But from my perspective, it's more and more about that these ethics are not implicitly in the design, but explicitly stated in the form of utility functions, which are not part of the design of the intelligent system itself. And that even goes not to very low level uh, deep learning algorithms, but that goes actually, or should in my perspective, go actually to the top of the whole system in which explicitly <coughs> is defined what actually the system should optimize or the company should optimize. So I was wondering how we could go from the transition to actually stating things in terms of law and norms of regulations towards stating terms more explicitly in the form of values in which systems or companies can do explicit cost-benefit analysis or society even could do explicit cost-benefit analysis. My short question is you can't. My longer quest, uh, answer, my, my, sorry, my short answer is you can't. My longer answer is that, by definition, a, uh, a program, an algorithm, a set of algorithm, whatever it is, lacks human judgment. Uh, it's not contextual. It lacks semantics. So you cannot, through a utility function or a set of utility function and optimization process, arrive to a solution that has the semantics that the human decision maker or makers will put behind it. So it's an illusion to think that you can have a, a machine uh, making such kind of ethical decisions. So it's the alternative so, humans. The, so, the, the, the machine human. is, the AI system, like both uh, me and uh, Raji told, is not just a computational system. The AI system, or the AI is more than just the, the computational component, is the whole social technical system which includes computational uh, components. The human components in those systems are the ones who can make this type of judgments. But in other end, it's also the humans, the, 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 the humans in the, in the social technical system, which determine what are the um, utility functions that we are giving to the system. So there is already a, a decision, many times implicit in terms of what the values are, but we decide what are the types of utility functions that we are designing, de de developing into the system. And by putting those utility functions to the system, we are giving the values that the system should be optimizing or uh, uh, optimizing for. So those type of uh, implicit or explicit decisions are a way to uh, guide what we are uh, uh, designing the systems for. So, so I, I'd like to say that. Um, I'd like to disagree with, with my colleagues here. Um, I think that we can do it, and I think if we were to hard code it, we're falling into the traps of kind of 20th century thinking of that we can actually scale as humans with our systems, and that we can actually think of everything that we need to be able to think of in order to specify what safe boundaries are. I mean, the nature of AI is that it should be thinking of things and doing things that we're not explicitly telling it to do. I mean, otherwise it would be a program. And if we expect it to do that with respect to capabilities, but not with respect to ethics and, and sort of safety and, and such, then, then we're really abdicating our role here in this room. So I think that there's this whole large field called value alignment and value learning, value loading that is talked about more um, in the AGI safety communities 
but is extremely relevant for the nearer term systems that will be coming online that have you know, a decent amount of learning capability and uh, reasoning capabilities, semantics awareness as well. I mean, you know, as we're building systems, I mean, we can add these types of things into them. Um, I mean, we're not talking about necessarily retrofitting yesterday's systems to do these things, right? Generally, we're talking about creating new systems with capabilities to be somewhat aware. Now, it doesn't mean that they're going to have parity with humans, you know, anytime soon but they can have much more dynamic kinds of evaluations of what would have positive valence versus negative valence and where, for instance, considering whether a side effect would be good or bad, that sort of thing. Now, it's not necessarily going to do that for everything in the world, but maybe you can do that two or three layers removed from what its immediate task is. Yeah, to, to avoid misconception, because I think that is important, I'm not advocating to say that systems should come up with their own utility function. I mean, it's still up to humans to specify actually what is Utah and what's not Utah. The only, what I'm saying here is that we have two different ways of thinking about how to actually formulate this. Formulate this in the form of norms, and formulate this in the form of law, or formulate it in the form actually of quantifying what is useful and what's not useful. Both have to be specified by humans, but there's a very much difference in how you apply that into systems and how these systems behave according to this type of specification. I, I don't really see many, much difference on those two ways to develop the, the decide the norms or the what is desirable or not, because in a sense what you want, to, the, the desirable behavior of the system can be seen as the norm for which you want the system too. So I don't really see what is the difference between the two ways that you are uh, advocating. Uh -uh. Well, maybe in short, in, in one case you have all kinds of conflicts and you have to some kind of conflict resolution, and in the other case you don't. So I mean, we're talking about actually two type different ways of specification of what actually systems should do, and I think it's very important to realize that that is different. In both ways, we are, in a sense, giving values to the system, or uh, putting our values into the system and uh, giving different ways to deal with those values. But the, the system doesn't, the values or the, the, the utility functions, whatever way you want to implement those values, don't come out of thin air, like you say. We are still giving it to the system. And we are giving it to the system, and we are expecting to the system in what way we are implementing them to somehow adhere to those functions and learn that what is uh, uh, what gets it closer to the utility function or optimizing the function or what uh, decreases the utility. So, in a sense, the, the whole uh, ethical regulation is about determining what should those utility functions be about okay. and not about how we are, are we going to deal with achieving those utility functions. And like what the answer that I tried to give to that uh, question, so the law or the regulation should be not so much in terms of how the system should be doing that, but about what do we want to give the system as limits. So and so, I, in that sense, I don't really see the difference between your two different well, approaches. Okay, th thank you, Regina. Well, one, one last question that we have here uh, for the panel, um, and then we have to wrap quickly. So, many of these different um, principles um, that have been put out by these different organizations have this air of sort of universality. And there is a lot of overlap between these different kinds of principles that, that are being put out. Um, you know, including the, the Beijing AI principles and what we've heard from, from Tencent and the OECD principles and uh, Silmar principles and the, the European Commission principles and um, about maybe a dozen others at least. Um, my question is, if we are looking to these to be somewhat universal or if we're trying to create international standards by which we can sort of implement these how can we go about trying to actually disentangle some of what we mean uh, when we actually use the same word in different ways? So, 
in Europe, the standards in terms of both the, the social norms and also uh, legal structures for privacy are more strict than in the United States. And in the United States, they're different than in China. Um, but still, we talk about privacy as an important thing in, 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 the, in all three of those spheres. Um, likewise, um, when we talk about the, um, like the beneficence for um, individuals um, or the, um, the well-being of individuals or um, what we're encouraging uh, regarding uh, the, the way people can interact with systems and, and what they should be afforded. Um, when we use language like, like a term like human rights, and we, we put that all throughout a, a document that's meant to be international, but when that's heard in China, it's heard as like a bludgeon, and it's very hard to see past it being just used as a club. Um, how can we move beyond that to ideas that are more granular, are more specific, and can actually be uh, mi like internalized more uh, internationally? Yes, uh, that's a very important point. I mean, those differences are real, and uh, the same words don't mean the same thing, and ethics is not necessarily the same in different regions. So, the, to, to answer your question, uh, this means we shouldn't remain at the level of principles. We should go more deeply to practical aspects, to what happens in, in, in practice in everyday life, in the design and the use of the systems, etc. This is why uh, it's very important to have actionable measures that can be translated maybe differently in different countries because they have different laws. And, and uh, this is actually, uh, I think, what, what is going to happen. Uh, at the same time, people, when they discuss, for example, at, even at, at a, a level of granularity, which is, say, in the United Nations, uh, you have the Declaration of Human Rights, right? Which is the same for every country in the United Nations. The implementation is different. I agree, and I think that exactly the point is that we cannot, and we have for the last, I don't know, 10,000 years, not be able to agree on uh, what is ethics and uh, what is universally uh, inter the interpretation of all these types of values. So we cannot expect that we are going to do it now. With, uh, the... And, and as, I also don't think that we should be trying to align the interpretation of what we mean by justice or by fairness or by safety or by privacy or whatever, what we can expect is that uh, as different organizations, different countries, different entities are coming up with those principles and uh, uh, are implementing these principles, they can give us their own interpretation and be explicit about the way that they are interpreting uh, fairness or uh, uh, justice or uh, safety or whatever, and then we can at least have uh, a basis to start discussing whether or not we agree with that interpretation. But it's indeed very easy to talk about uh, safety, but if you mean uh, safety, if you mean something different from me from safety, we, we, we need to go to the ways that we interpret this uh, this uh, concept. Uh, Jeff, uh, yes, I agree. So I think uh, it is. It is possible to to get a set of common words about uh, principles of ethics through more uh, diverse and uh, multi-regional collaborations and dialogues on the international level. Uh, but I think also we can reach uh, such a consensus, but it will depend the national country to interpret this kind of words or ethics. Uh, maybe different country will prefer different. Uh, have different priorities for the values because many values will have conflicts between them. I think the 
the real issue is in the implementation. I think it, it will depends on the national policy. No? I'd like to uh, thank the panel, and I think.